So this guy is called a circular logarithmic ruler and it has two sides and two rotating caps one of which controls both arrows and this other guy rotates the dial on one side only and this thing is actually a calculator and let me show you how it works suppose you want to calculate 3 squared well there is this red indicator here right here so what I want to do is I want to place it at the position of number 3 here so I align it with 3 and if I want to square it I need to put this arrow onto 1 like this and then I rotate my dial until my arrow this long arrow starts pointing at 3 so here they coincide and boom here's the answer 9 okay so let's dive into mathematics which makes it work remember the word logarithmic in the name of this thing so what is a logarithm well it's simple if x to the n is equal to a then we say that log of base x is equal to n so a logarithm just extracts the power since our world mostly revolves around number 10 in this video all our logs will have a base equal to 10. So on this side of the device these numbers do not actually mean integers but they mean the logs of integers. So this is log 2, this is log 3 and this is log 20 and they are put on a circle for convenience. If you want to construct a logarithmic scale you just take a graph of y equals log x and build horizontal lines corresponding to log 1, log 2, log 3 and so on. So this line here contains integers from 1 to 10 in logarithmic scale. And our device has this scale up to 100 but it is put out on a circle instead of a line. And the reason why using logs is convenient when it comes to multiplication or division is because of this property. If you take a log of a product of two numbers A and B, then it will be the same as calculating logs separately for A and B and then adding them together. This property is just a restatement of the fact that multiplying 10 to the n by 10 to the m is equal to 10 to the n plus m. So what does a logarithm do? It changes multiplication to addition. Likewise it will turn division to subtraction. Remember when I was calculating 3 times 3 in the beginning of this video, I initially placed the indicator against 3 and the arrow was pointing at 1. This is necessary because when I rotate the dial until it, the arrow meets the 3, I'm effectively adding log 3 to log 3. So I get log of 9. So let us calculate something different. Suppose I want to multiply 14 by 3. So this is 10, this is 11, 12, 13, 14 here and again I put it onto 1, this arrow and I move the dial until I hit the 3 so and we read off 40, 41, 42 like we expect. So how about we talk about different operations? For example, what if I want to calculate the square root of a number? Well, on this device it's even easier because we have this internal scale of numbers and they are also logarithmic but they are put 
so that they correspond to the square roots of the numbers on the outer scale. So, here's 25, and on the internal scale we have 5, which is a square root. 36 is 6, and 81 is 9. And division is just the reverse of multiplication. So if we want to calculate something like 60 divided by 12, what do we do? We put this guy at 60, and we put the arrow at 12, 10, 11, 12, and we rotate it backwards until our arrow arrives back at 1. So here it comes at 1, and boom, 5, like we expect. So I know it doesn't look too impressive in our century, but remember that this device is from 1966, and it has no batteries, so it's a calculator that will work forever, and it can really help you out with some uh, small number manipulations. So I would really suggest to get one of these things for yourself to play around and learn all of its functions. But remember that there is another side to it, which I haven't said anything about, but I will make a separate video on it because it deserves special attention. But for now, thank you for watching and stay tuned.